Hello, my dear students. Welcome to Teacher at Home. Today class, we are going to learn the fourth chapter, British Exploitation and Resistance. A day in January 1907. It was on that day the wedding of Gangul's doctor was, daughter was solemnized. Gangul was a farmer from a village near Calcutta. A lot of guests gathered in the marriage. They all were received by offering sweets. But the sweets were without sugar. Instead, it contained gadgetry. When someone asked about it, Gangu responded with pride. The British are responsible for all our miseries. Hadn't we decided to boycott their products, so I preferred Indian gadgetry to British sugar. What could be the reason for the people to boycott the British products? In what ways did the British rule affect the Indians? How did they respond to the British rule? Let's examine them. In the previous classes, we have discussed the establishment of the British rule by subjugating princely states. The British conquered princely states using military forces and diplomatic strategies. It was during the spam of 100 years between the Battle of Plassey in 1757 and the first war of Indian independence in 1857. The, a major part of India came under the British rule. Around 63% of the regions in the Indian subcontinent had come under the direct control of the British. The rest of the regions were ruled by the native kings who had been subjugated to the British. Impact of British Policies Farmers were one of the immediate victims of the British rule. It was the land revenue system implemented by the British that destroyed the backbone of the farmers. Aim of their tax policy was to maximize their income. Land revenue system implemented in the various regions under the British rule was different. The following table shows the British land revenue system in India. Land revenue system regions. Permanent land revenue settlement Bengal, Bihar and Orissa regions. Right worry system South Indian regions. Mahalwari system, Northwest regions. Features of permanent land revenue settlement. In the permanent land revenue settlement, the tax was collected by the Semindas. Seminda was the owner of the entire land, where he had the jurisdiction of the to collect tax. While the Semindas became the owners of the land, actual farmers became tenants. Farmers were to pay up to 60% of the yield as tax. Tax was to be paid even at the time of the poor yield. The tax was to be paid in cash strictly before the cut-off date. Before including the system, tax could be paid in kind. Lord Cornwallis, British Governor General, introduced this system. In the right system, introduced in South India, the land revenue was collected directly from the farmers' rights, though Ownership of the land was vested with the farmers. Excessive tax impoverished them. Furthermore, the tax rates were frequently increased. In the Mahalwari system, the village headman was assigned the responsibility to collect tax. The tax rate was excessive in this system too. India village Mahal was considered as a single unit for tax collection. The land revenue policies implemented by the British affect the agriculture sector. When they were unable to pay tax in the form of money before the deadline, they had to take loan from money lenders at a high rate of interest. The loans were obtained by mortgaging agricultural land. Agricultural land of the farmers who could not pay back the loan and interest was seized by the money lenders. Commercialization of the agriculture Traditionally, the peasants in India were engaged in agriculture mainly to produce things only to meet the needs of the family and the village. During the British rule, they were compelled to cultivate crops according to the market needs. As a result, commercial crops were largely cultivated instead of food crops. This transformation is transfer termed as commercialization of agriculture. We have seen the farmers had to pay high rate of tax in the form of cash before the deadline. To meet this, they cultivated the crops 
that had higher market place price the product that had demanded in the european markets were given higher price thus the indian lands became the cultivating field of europe fill the table below identify the major crops that were widely cultivated in this period crops indigo region bengal bihar cotton maharashtra punjab sugarcane uttar pradesh tea assam kerala jute bengal wheat punjab indigo revolt indigo had high price in the market during that period it was used for dye for no artificial colors were used then the industrial revolution in the 18th century in england textile industry gathered much momentum and the demand for indigo further increased it was necessary for the british industrialist to get indigo plantation spread to more regions in india they gave the farmers a good amount as advance for the cultivation of indigo the farmers succumbed to the temptation of the company owners and widely planted indigo as they were in trouble with no other means to pay the heavy land tax each farmer who accepted the advance amount from the british was liable to plant indigo in a fixed portion of his land farmers were also compelled to cultivate it at the most fertile part of the agriculture land so the land used for the cultivation of food grains was to be reserved for indigo plantation due to the interference of the british agents in the harvesting season the farmers received only a low price for indigo later when artificial colors were invented indigo became obsolete this made the plight of the farmers more miserable for they had used much of their land for indigo cultivation in 1859 the farmers of bengal organized themselves and declared that they were giving up indigo cultivation they attacked indigo farmers in factories with bows arrows swords and spears several women also participated in the revolt the writers exam examinated catered the british supporters and those who worked for the british hearing the news several educated people from calcutta read the revolt areas and extended their support the revolt had a strong effect on the government the government immediately appointed a commission to study the problems of the indigo farmers commission found that the indigo farming was uneconomic and proposed to stop it peasant revolts in kerala british malabar witnessed many peasant struggles it was exploitation and suppression of the landlords and the british that led to the revolt in malabar the british treated the jenmis Gem- landlords as owners of the land the revolt was against the atrocities of the landlords including excavation of tenants such atrocities were carried out with the support of the british farmers of south malabar were tenants who cultivated the land obtained on lease from landlords most of the tenants were maplas muslims in malabar are known as maplas so this struggles that happened in the 19th century are known as mapala rebellion during mapala riots the insurgents murdered kanoli and then district magistrate of malabar at his residence in west hill calicut around 22 percent revolts took place in malabar to suppress this revolts the british raised a special armed force police balloton named malabar special police to encounter about the frequent revolts the british government appointed william logan commission the commission pointed out the cause of the struggle was the unfair land revenue system of the british struggle storms jungles sandal is a tribe inhabiting the valleys of rajmahal hills stretching across the present bengal jharkhand and bihar they lived closely with the nature and earned a living by farming and collecting forest produce they were sturdy and hard working and had their own unique culture the rhythm of their life was disturbed with the establishment of the british rule zamindars and money lenders captured their land the british officers made them work as slaves in laying railway lines when their life became unbearable they decided to make up arms against the british under the leadership of 
Sido and Kanhu. Raj Mahal Hills became a battlefield against the British. The British were shocked at their fighting spirit. But the Sandars could not keep it going for long. Thousands of Sandars were killed in the struggle. Above description is about the resistance of the Sandars against the British, 1855. The tribes became the victims of British rule. Gathering forest produce, cattle rearing, shifting cultivation, hunting were the major means of livelihood. The Forest Act imposed by the British made their life miserable. They were prohibited to enter forests when the British declared forests as protected. The forests they were abandoned with trees required by the British were declared as protected forests. British widely felled trees from forests to lay railway lines and build ships and for plantation. British levied tax at higher rates on the forest produce collected by the tribes. These situations led the tribes to fight against the British. Kurchia Revolt Kurchia Revolt was another tribal insurgency against the British. It was organized by the Kurchia and the Kurumba tribes of Fine Art in 1812. Let's examine the reasons for this revolt. Imposition of excessive tax by the British, compulsion of paying tax in cash, seizing of agricultural land for non-payment tax. The revolt was led by the Kurchia leader Ramanambi. Several people other than the tribes also joined the struggle. The British government suppressed the struggle and killed Ramanambi. T.H. Baba, the then sub-collector of Talasheri recorded, if the writers could resist one more month, they could control the entire state. Beside the Sandal and Kurcho revolts, several other tribal insurgencies broke out in different parts of India. Important among them the Pahiriya Rebellion, Cold Rebellion, Kasi Rebellion, Bill Rebellion, Munda Rebellion. Listen to the words of K. Suresh Singh, a historian about the tribal struggles in India. Anti-British struggles of illiterate tribal communities were more aggressive, intense and continuous than any other sex of including peasants. Decline of traditional industries. Misery hardly finds a parallel in the history of commerce. The bonds of the cotton weavers are placing the plains of India. William Bendict. Exact extract given above the observation made by William Bendict. The Governor General of India on the decline of textile industry that was world famous one. The British policy is completely ruined not only the agriculture sector but also the handicrafts in India. Let's examine the causes for their decline. Large scale import of machine made British textiles were the major reason for the ruin of Indian textile industry. Machine made textiles imported from Britain could be sold easily for their they were cheap. The expansion of railway was also responsible for the decline of the Indian textile industry. It helped the British to carry the imported fabrics from port towns to India, villages and the cotton collected from villages to the ports for exporting to Britain. Thus, Indian weavers lost their business in village market too. Due to the higher tax levied, the price of Indian textiles exported to the British increased, so it lost the British market too. A British officer forced the weavers to work at meagre wages and to exchange the products to them at a cheaper rate. Weavers gave them their work massively due to the exploitation and torture of the British officers. So, reached their, so they reached for other jobs. Immediate reflection of the decline of textile industry was found in urban areas. Textile centers like Mushidabad, Dhaka, that were thickly populated once became least in inhabited. The people who had been working in textile industry migrated to villages and engaged in agriculture-related works. As a result of the number of people who engaged in agriculture to earn a living increased, it fragmented the agriculture fields and the production. It fell to be stagnant. The state of handicrafts in villages was not different. Observe the following table. Village industry is poultry. Cause of decline, import of aluminium vessels. Tanning, export of raw weather to Europe. Carpentry, use of machine made of metals. The ruins of agriculture sector and handicraft industry led India to famine and death due to starvation. Lakhs of people died of famine. 
advent of modern industries and the plight of the workers. British industrialists started modern industries in India in the 19th century. But the number was limited. The plantation industry was the first among them. Later industries like textile, jute, steel and paper were established. Laborers in these industries were exploited. A condition was extremely pathetic. The following were the major problems faced by them. Prolonged working hours, meager wages, unhealthy accommodations. The Indian working class who does not have enough food to sustain and who lead a basically life in a totally unhygienic and surrounding is someone who is exploited to the maximum in the industrial capital world. Jargon Kuchni Kunshiyap, German economic historian. There was no trade union in India at that time. However, the workers agitated whenever they suffered extreme exploitation. Great Bombay textile strikes and Calcutta jute mill strike are example for such agitations. We have discussed the suffering of different sections of people and the agitations against the British rule as a result of economic exploitation of the British. These agitations were limited to the respective regions and were not organized. Well organized, but in the second half of the 19th century, different sections of oppressed people mobilized against the British and launched organic, organized agitations. First War of Indian Independence, 1857. Dawn of 11 May, 1857. People of Delhi woke up to a tumuli. Thousands of armed writers were reaching Delhi from Meerut, crossing the river Yamuna. The writers included sepoys and common people. In the previous night, they had assassinated some British officers and set fire to their offices. They declared Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah II as the Emperor of India. Soon the riots spread to other parts of North India. Above description is about the riot of 1857. Historians termed the revolt as Indian's first power of independence. The rebellion was started by the sepoys of Meerut. What led them to the riot? Poor salary, abuse by the British officers were the major reasons for their resentment. The rumor that the cartridges, the newly supplied Enfield rifles, were greased with the fat of cows and pigs provoked them. It wanted the religious settlements, sentiments of the Hindu and Muslim soldiers. Soldiers who were unwilling to use the new cartridges were punished by the officers. In Barakpur, in Nep, Bengal, Mangal Pandey, an Indian soldier, shot at a British officer who forced them to use the new cartridge, was arrested and hanged to death. People from all walks of the life, including kings, farmers, craftsmen, took part in the rebellion. The British rule had adversely affected the kings too. In addition to the daughter of Laps, the princely states were convicted to the inefficient rule and the annexed by the British. This made kings to lead the rebellion. Miseries of farmers, that is the cause of revolt of 1857, dissatisfaction of kings, poverty of the craftsmen, miseries of the sepoys. Along with the kings and the sepoys, common people also took part in the revolt. They attacked the British and money lenders and set fire to their account books, deeds and documents of transactions. Salient features of this rebellion was the active participation of the common people like farmers and craftsmen. Out of one and half people or half lakh of people who were killed in the riots at our the princely state, one lakh were the common people. The real strength of the rebellion was the Hindu Muslim unity. A spirit of cooperation existed among the soldiers common people and the leaders. The writers captured Delhi and declared Bahadur Shah II as the Emperor of India. Table below shows the major centers of revolt and the leaders. Centers of revolt, Delhi. The leaders, Bahadur Shah II. Jansi, Anilakshmi Bai, Lucknow, Begum Hasrat Mahal, Kanpura, Nana Sahib Tandya Topi, Faziabad, Maulavi Ahmadullah, the writers could not overcome the superior military power of the British and the rebellion was completely suppressed. Though the revolt could not succeed completely, it was marked as the foremost massive resistance of the Indians against the British, brought about several changes in the policies and the administration of the British. British Parliament took over India from the British East India Company. However, the economic exploitation of the British reached its extreme level in the post-1857 phase. It is evident in the starvation death at that time. In the second half of the 19th century, 
around 2 crores of people died spread over 24 great famines realizing the exploitation economic exploitation of the british created an anti british feeling among different sections of people this attitude was a major factor that led to the emergence of indian nationalism in the 19th century nationalism is a sense of unity among the people of a country irrespective of caste creed religion and region in the national congress was an example for such an organized form of nationalism in the national congress was formed in december 1885 in bombay several two delegates 72 delegates from different parts of the india attended its first session in the national congress led the anti british struggle from 1885 till india attained independence in 1947 dada bhai naro ji was the first person was the person who studied about the facts on the determination of indian economy under the british rule the drain of wealth to england was the root cause of poverty and starvation in india based on the study he put forward drain theory and said that how did the indian wealth flow to britain export of indian raw materials salary and pension to the british officers in india profit gained through the sale of the british products in india tax from india early readers are like dada bhai naro ji ramesh chandra dutt and krishna gobal uh, gobal krishna gogle had a pivotal pi- role in making the common people aware of the economic policy of the britain that impoverished india common people realized that the poverty and exploitation that faced had been the creation of the british it reinforced their anti british attitude the nationalism grown out of such awareness is termed by some historians as economic nationalism swadeshi so, movement new method of resistance majority of the early readers of indian national movement were bengalis so bengal was called the nursery of indian national movement lord curzon divided bengal to in 1905 to weaken the indian national movement so deshi movement new method of resistance to check economic drain the early national leaders pleaded with the people to boycott foreign goods and strengthen indian industry by consuming indian products major strategy adopted for the anti partition movement in bengal in 1905 was a boycott of foreign goods and consumption of indigenous products as part of the agitation foreign goods were collected and burned publicly the extensive use of indigenous products by discarding foreign items regenerated re- indian industry as a result a number of textile mills so factories matchbox companies national banks and insurance companies were established it was during the swadeshi movement that the bengal chemical store in bengal the tata iron and steel plant in maharashtra swadeshi steam navigation company in tamil nadu were established Embod of British goods to India steadily went down during this period. We have Chidambaram Pillai, who led the Sudeshi movement in Tamil Nadu, established Sudeshi Steam Navigation Company in Tuticorn, 1906. So he called the helms, helmsman of Tamil Nadu, Kappalautia Tamilan, the initial capital of 6 lakh rupees to start the company was collected from local traders. Participation of women laborers and students were another remarkable feature of this movement washerman avowed that they would not wash foreign clothes the peasants swore that they would not perform rituals and prayers using foreign items women boycotted foreign bangles and utensils students quit their schools to take part in this movement in their nationalism gained further strength from swadeshi movement the leaders like palagangadhara tilaka lala rajput rai Vivin Chandra Bal emphasized the necessity of overthrowing the foreign rule. The leaders were together known as Lal Bal Pal. Freedom is my birthright. I shall have it. This proclamation of Lal Bal Gangadhar Tilak inspired the national movement. We have seen how the protest of the people against the British policy that exploited and impoverished Indians attained an organized form. It was this protest that were transformed as Indian nationalism. boycott of foreign goods and consumption of indigenous goods acted as a powerful weapon the anti british movement later gandhi ji made this movement strong and popular conduct a seminar on how the economic exploitation of the british caused the emergence of nationalism land revenue system permanent settlement rightwari system mahalwari system indigo revolt mapilla rebellion shandal rebellion kurchia rebellion decline of textile industry decline of villages and in- village industries 
poverty of industrial laborers the revolt of 1857 earlier national leaders drain theory causes swadeshi movement emergence of nationalism so that's all about this chapter if you are interested please do like share and subscribe my channel okay thank you